welcome to Unearth the Upstate. I'm Mari. And I am Matthew. And we want to apologize. We did try to record one of our typical episodes yesterday, but we could only come up with 20 minutes of uh, program. <laughs> so we have to come up with something quick on the fly. And since Thanksgiving's coming up, yeah, yeah, yeah. let's talk about Upstate New York's food. Now, yeah. again, people who are not familiar with Upstate New York, and are just familiar with the city, might think, oh, we're going to be talking about pizza and bagels. <clears throat> and maybe hot dogs. I just want to get this endorsement out of the way for <laughs> Youngling Traditional Lager. Isn't that Pennsylvania, though? Well, it's sold here in New York. Yeah, I know. <laughs> there we go. Sard- Sardneck Breweries. We-, we could do a whole episode <laughs> on, on, on the local breweries and the wineries. Yes, in fact, that could be a whole podcast. But Actually, you can't throw a stone without around the Finger Lakes area without hitting either a brewery or a winery. Yeah. Honestly. Oh yeah, and up yeah, they're it everywhere. Really... They are everywhere. Uh, and around here, let's see, we've got a few good meat markets. We've got mm-hmm. cheese. We've got okay. hey, Chobani is made in here in New York, which we'll is mm-hmm. kind of throw it out to you. So okay, okay, but that kind of, we're we're gonna get to all this. But like I said, there's this misconception that New York's food is basically pizza, bagels, and street hot dogs, and but. Let's start with a famous New York food mm-hmm. that everyone has. Right. And it was started at Anchor Bar in Buffalo. Oh, yeah. That should the be the hint. We're Buffalo talking. Buffalo wings. Buffalo wings, yes. Yeah. Now, we have Absolutely. not had authentic Anchor Bar Buffalo wings yet. No, no, no we we've gone. We've gone through Buffalo a couple, you know, I think twice yeah, a few, now. A few times, yeah. We've never had the gumption really to, yeah, and, to stop anywhere because we were on our way to somewhere else. And the last time, they were, it was, what, 12 hours before lockdown? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, there was no exactly. way. There was no way we were going to make yeah, it. The closest we got to getting genuine Buffalo wings was, you know, when we went to Niagara. Yeah. And yeah. that was a, a beautiful trip. Yes. Yeah. And that, quite literally, folks, our trip to Niagara Falls, uh-huh. as we're heading home, the announcement is made, shopping centers, restaurants, everything. It was on lockdown. So we timed it just beautifully. Um, but yep. everyone should be familiar with Buffalo Wings. I know the the story behind it is basically, it it's a bar food. Uh-huh. And they... This, they fried up some uh, buff, from wings one night and then dipped them in butter and hot sauce. And guess what? That was the start. And I'm oversimplifying the story. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, well, I've always heard it that the, the, yeah. the mom had a, a terrible time feeding her son's friends when they came oh, over yeah. for a snack. And, and you know, so uh, she got frustrated with the, with the situation. She mm-hmm. had all these wings. Right. And she just took what she had on her, you know, in her kitchen, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. threw it together, and it came up with that was the, the birth of buffalo wings. That's, yep. that's the story I heard. Now we're going to stick with chicken for a bit. My absolute favorite pasta dish, mm-hmm. and the best place, in my opinion, to get it is Teddy's in Rome, New York. Oh, could it be Chicken Riggies? Chicken Riggies! Oh, my God. <laughs> this... People who live outside of Central New York are going, what? <laughs> it's got rigatoni. Hence, Rig- rigato- so hence the name yeah. Riggies. It's rig- hence Riggies. Mm-hmm. And it's got chicken. Yeah. Okay. Oh, it's got so much more in it. Oh, it's like a tomato cream sauce. and there's it's a Vodka. Vodka, it's vodka or cream. vodka or tomato cream sauce. Yeah. I, I think Teddy's is vodka. Mm-hmm. I'm not yeah. sure. But the, the sauce there. may vary just a little bit, but it's, it's usually, it's not a... A heavy tomato sauce, if any tomato sauce, if any tomatoes in it. It's more on the side of the cream um, sauce. And it's usually got peppers in it as mm-hmm. well. It's never overly spicy, though. Uh, I've never had one that was super spicy. It's got enough of a, just enough of a kick to give it flavor. Nothing to really, like I said, yeah. it, it just taps you in the back of the mouth with a little bit of that the, from the peppers. But... It's very good, and like I said, my favorite place to get is Teddy's in Rome, and I had to go to a doctor's appointment quite recently, and we made sure to stop at Teddy's, and we got one serving to go, because they load load you with that, and we it took both of us to finish it, yeah. so... <laughs> 
Uh, but yeah, if you go into Rome, Utica, Syracuse area, everyone's got chicken riggies. Oh, yeah. yeah. It is one thing you can guarantee you're going to find. Well, you know, the portion that's there now uh, mm-hmm. th- that they offer at, at Teddy's in mm-hmm. Rome mm-hmm. for their chicken riggies. Uh, I used to be able to eat a whole plate of that. Oh, stuff, gosh, but yeah. Since we've since we, uh, I've been following you <laughs> on your bariatric journey. If I since can my mention tummy it. got smaller. Yeah. <laughs> if I could mention that. <laughs> I think I've talked about it before, yeah. Oh, I yeah. went off on that rant, we, yes, uh, I remember. Uh, no, no, since then, you know, we've had to split a plate, yeah. which is a nice thing, uh, yeah. which means I can enjoy other things uh, along uh, with the menu. Mm-hmm. They're, the bread that that's there, do they make their own bread? I their believe bread? so, I believe yeah, so, yeah. Right. Anyway, the breadsticks, yeah, there's other things on the menu that, mm-hmm. you know, that, well, just check it out. Yeah. They're online. Um, yeah. Check out Teddy's online. But yeah, if you're ever, uh, but you're ever in the Utica, Rome check Mary, out the that, menu. that is one dish to keep in mind when you're up there. We're going to be yes, mentioning others in it, the area as well. Yes, it is named after Teddy Roosevelt. President. Oh, the, the, the restaurant. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the restaurant. <laughs> okay. <laughs> A little um, digression there. And another chicken, which is very famous around here. I did not know about this chicken uh, until we moved here. And, well, we when we grew up in northern Wisconsin, there were chicken barbecues, you know, usually done by the oh, fire yeah. departments and everything. Right alongside the pork, alongside yeah. the hamburgers. And that, right next so to the when, when we came up here and we see chicken barbecues, like, oh, that's nice. They're doing chicken barbecues up here fundraising. Uh-huh. But there's a particular type of chicken they serve at these barbecues. It's called Cornell Chicken. <laughs> Hence the name where it was developed. It was developed in <laughs> Cornell University. And it was a way to make the... Students in the biology lab got bored one day. No, <laughs> no. That's not what happened. The poultry farmers were having a hard time selling uh, these tougher chickens. You have the fryers. You have the, you know, you have, the, you have different type. Okay. Okay. I'm not too versed on chickens, but in rabbits, you have the show <laughs> rabbits, and you have the meat rabbits, and you have... The, the fur rabbits, right, basically. Right. Okay. And like fur baron critters? The, the fur rabbits, before anybody freaks out, most of the fur rabbits, you brush them to get the hair and, you know, and then you can make yarn out of it and everything. You don't have right. to harm the animal. Um, <laughs> but this was to get, like, uh, the tougher types of chicken meat get more platable. So he, this one uh, professor, I don't know, I think he was a professor... Uh, he was a member of the Cornell University staff, came up with this marinade right. that's vinegar-based. So I think people in the Carolinas might be, I think it's Carolina has the vinegar barbecue. Uh, we'll be going, I know Ooh. there's the vinegar-based, the, uh, yeah. the tomato-based, the, in the dry rub. Right. Are, well, are this, is a, this is a vinegar. But... We're, we're going to get hate mail. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but this, this marinade is a vinegar-based one. It also has mayonnaise in it and everything. Uh, it really does a good job of, of making that chicken palatable, and when you grill it, it's amazing. It really is. Uh, I've had to, uh, most recipes you find are for like, this is enough to marinate 10 birds. <laughs> so if you need to scale it down, you have to get creative. Well, I mean, 10 birds. Um, and my, my way of doing it was to take mayonnaise and some vinegar and a few other things. It basically was the same ingredients that just put it in a different way. <laughs> But it's a, it's good chicken. It really is. But it, it's that you may have seen the recipe. Maybe if you are familiar with Cornell Extension, I wonder if they put that recipe out there through the extension as well. Is, so. is that ten birds all at once, love? Yeah, you know, and then you put them all out on the grill. You okay. know, if you have them, yeah. So, uh, okay. Let's see here. I'm just going down this list. I actually wrote this up in a Reddit, a Reddit post, so <laughs> that's where I'm getting right. this. Um, there is another one that I didn't know existed until we moved out here, and I love roast beef sandwiches. Mm. Oh, but Western New York, you knock it up a notch. You really do. It's called Beef on a Wreck, and that's W-E-C-K. So, well... No, well, how is it pronounced? Rank roll? Vank roll? It's a Kimmerek roll. Kimmerek roll. K-I-M-M-E-L... Kimmelrek. Kimmelrek oh, roll, right. which is a roll of caraway seeds and coarse salt on it. All right. It's roast beef and horseradish on this roll. And you would think, 
well, that's just a basic sandwich, but oh, it's yeah. that combination. And when you say beef on a rack, a rack, people know what you're talking about, and that's what you'll get. So, oh, you know, uh, now what was that pub? That we really enjoyed down in Syracuse. They moved away from Clark's. Uh, the Clark's. That yeah, they closed. It. Yeah, unfortunately. But I they... don't know if anybody out there in uh, yeah. uh, podcast land who are uh, listening, mm -hmm. you know, in, in the the British Isles, mm -hmm. uh, specifically Ireland, mm -hmm. uh, that Clark's was pretty much really a... patterned yeah. itself after. Uh, uh, to, well, actually the. The owners had traveled around quite a bit, mm -hmm. worked at some pubs, mm -hmm. you know. And, it was uh, a we'd, legit we'd call pub. them foreign pubs, of course, yeah. but you know, though. Uh, but there they'd know, uh, 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 and uh, and so they knew something. They mm -hmm. knew what they were doing when yeah. they set up when, uh, Clark's, mm -hmm. uh, you know, as an Irish style pub. And so uh, they transferred that out of uh, what was it, Armory Square? They used to be yeah. Armory Square. When they were in Armory Square, their tagline mm -hmm. was one sandwich. 30 beers or something along those lines. And that <laughs> pretty much pretty much was the truth. You'd go at you, your choices for the menu was a cheese plate, mm -hmm. a roast beef sandwich. And on Fridays they had a turkey sandwich. That was it. That was your choices for food. And you were, but the nice thing I liked about Clark's when they were open, there was no TVs. There was no oh, loud was, music. Oh yeah, there was no. You could mm -hmm. go there and have great conversations with somebody enjoying a cheese plate and one mm -hmm. of their amazing roast beef sandwiches. There was the more public area where they had the bar proper, yeah. and then there was a, a more private area yeah. where they yeah. had booths and, and open. It was tables one of our favorite things to, and, to meet to meet up mm -hmm. after work and go there. That was exactly. One of our, it, could, was, it was so so sad. And they you had can to sit and write a few lines, yeah. you know, on your laptop, whatever. You, it was so sad they had to close. They I were know. one of my favorite places. But... I know, really. And when they moved it, it kind of changed the... Well, I wouldn't say the veneer of the place changed. Mm -hmm. Because it was... Uh, yeah, it did. When you walked in, yeah, it felt like Clark's, yeah. even though it was a new location. And so that much didn't change. Right. But they changed the menu. Yeah, they... Uh, yeah. And they added the vac roll. Yeah. And Which was, was a good good choice. It was a good choice, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but then you couldn't get the old roll. Yeah. It but, was just the vac roll. But it's a good choice, though. I like the... <laughs> okay. It was. It was. Now, well, that's a little history on Clark. Yeah. Now, let's talk about one that's kind of famous up here. Um, and every place you go from the original, and the original's in Rochester, will put their own little spin on it. Uh-huh. And I will tell you, this is either the best drunk food that was ever invented. I have actually seen on a food documentary, there's something similar in Scotland that is served on a pizza box, but it's the same concept. Uh, but I will say, I think our version is better. <laughs> but it's the same concept. Oh, with modesty. Uh, and every place you go, we'll put their own little spin on it. And I am talking about the most appetizing name of a food dish in the world, the garbage plate. Oh. Yes. Haran Hassan. Yes. Garbage plate. <laughs> garbage plate. Why is it oh, called man. that? Is well, people... you, you start out with French fries. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was Nick Tahoe Hots that started it. More than likely, there's a little, there's a little bit of a, uh, okay, okay. there's a little bit of controversy if they it's, really it's just started. It's another one of those or, uh, origin stories, right. which, you know, that's, you know. But well, majority people shady. give it to Nick Tahoe Tah Hots. <laughs> and what it was, people would come in and just say, just throw all the garbage on the plate. And what oh. they were talking about was macaroni salad, mm -hmm. fried potatoes, mm -hmm. and usually hot dogs with Chili sauce, and we'll talk about the chili sauce because it might now, not be what you now expect. The base is just basically the. the it's yeah. got to be a fried potato, of some kind, right? It, home fries home is fries. usually what it is. Okay, I, right. I've had it with French fries, but I like it better with the home because fries. Because I've seen it with tots, you know, tater tots as well. And, the, yeah. and I've seen it with the French fries, and yeah. then I've uh, I've seen it with the home fry that, style too. That and, wonderful place we yeah. ate. Lock was it? That wasn't Lockport. Oh, I can't even think of the place okay, we ate. But, but I can picture the inside. Uh -huh. They had the, all the, those um, band posters, and the oh, owner yes, came up and talked to us. Uh huh. Yeah, oh, that was great. Yeah, that I was, can't remember that the was place. Really fun. It was uh, right after uh, I had gotten done with something. For, yeah, you were for work. You had just finished yeah. something work, mm -hmm. and we was lunchtime. We were hungry, and mm -hmm. we went down. I forgot which was the place was. Well, it was west of Rochester. Yeah, their garbage plate was amazing, mm -hmm. and. Uh, but yeah, it's basic. It, you have you may have baked beans on it instead of the macaroni salad. I 
I go either way. I can take either of them. And usually when we order it, we get a, a, what's called a white hot, which is a type of hot dog. We will go into those more because that is a New York, uh-huh. up in New York thing. <clears throat> and a hamburger patty. And then it's usually topped with mustard and everything else. So mm-hmm. it's yes. like... Like I said, it's and great of course, drunk you know, food. You get the buns and whatnot. On oh, the buns and everything, mm-hmm. so it's all tossed in there. Yes. And it's all layered on top of each other. And you're going, and you look at this thing going. If you're a type of person start? who cannot <laughs> stand having your food touch, do not order a garbage plate. <laughs> so if you're the, the spirit of uh, Peter Steele, don't. Yeah. don't. <laughs> Don't order the garbage Which, plate. Uh, throw it on an obscure <laughs> reference out here yeah, with about a musician. Thank you very much. But, <laughs> Peter Ratashezik. Yeah. Anyway, but it's, like I said, every place will have its own spin. We've had it with macaroni salad. We've had it with baked beans. I've had it with coleslaw instead of the macaroni salad. That was unique. I will right. say that. Um, but like I said, you can order different types of meat. Some throw fish on it. I wouldn't... I. I don't like fish, so I wouldn't order one of those. But I could see where fried fish would be good on it. But, again, that's a dish me and Matt split. I know people who could eat one sitting down. And I was mentioned that, that dish I saw in that program from Scotland. It's almost the same thing, They but they put theirs on a in a pizza box. And it's got, like, chips or french fries in it, uh, gyro meat, uh, and, like, your, your typical... You're done drinking in the bar in, in, in Scotland, and you go out to eat type food, and it's all I'm a Scots. I'm a... no, but it's literally this is how they came up. They just threw it all in a pizza box, <laughs> and here you go. And I, I had to figure out what they called it, but it's along the same lines as a garbage plate, right? Uh, so it's a similar concept, just different things thrown in there, and they're made to be shared. But you can uh-huh. eat one by yourself if you're really, really hungry. But sure. definitely, I would share it with somebody because again, yeah, definitely bring a friend. It on. Right. Now, we mentioned two, there's two components of that that we're going to have to mention. One is the chili sauce. Uh-huh. What do you, okay, before we moved out here, what would you think chili sauce was? Well, now you say it. Mm-hmm. Now you put me on the spot. Well, I'll give you, yeah, I'll tell you mine interpretation. Can't tell you. Okay. Can't tell you. Uh, I, I, I just cracked a beer, mate. <laughs> no, uh, well, you know, I think it's chili sauce. I think it's something that goes in along with beans. Right. You know. Or, you know, we, we people put actually um, a ground beef and bean chili. Right. Uh-huh. Or my mom made a chili sauce that was closer to a chutney. It was something, I don't know where she got this. She canned it herself. It was mm-hmm. pretty amazing stuff. But the chili sauce we get here is a meat sauce. Mm-hmm. It usually has like ground beef or uh, chopped up ha- um, hot dogs in it. And it's got tomato base. with. And the interesting part, it uses allspice and cloves for a seasoning so it's really got a unique flavor and that is what you'll get on the garbage plate with the chili sauce you can order hot dogs with it and uh our little mimi's diner in here i love ordering their <laughs> their hot dogs with that chili sauce yeah. on it it's really got a unique flavor when it, with those spices that's what makes it different you know, because you're you're gonna look at it and go, oh, it's a chili sauce. You're gonna really think, oh, habanero, or, you know. It does taste good. Hella, and there is hot sauce in it, but mm-hmm. then it hits you with that allspice and cloves, and it's There's really good. There's things to balance it, yeah. Yeah, it and it's really good. That's what I don't get about those hot sauce challenges. I mean, why did you put yourself through that? Oh yeah. Torture. And I mentioned the white hots. Well, white hots, they're just a type of hot dog. It's up around here. It's a natural casing hot dog that's made with beef, pork, and veal. Mm-hmm. And it's white. Yeah, for me, it's got to be natural casing or yeah. else I run and, it to trouble. Well, most of the, most of the white huts up here are natural mm-hmm. casing, thank goodness. I mean, yeah. oh, and, and okay, people in the listening, let's start a fight. Hoffman versus Zweiglers. Put up your ducks. Mark of the Queen better. <laughs> Hoffman versus Zweiglers. Who, <laughs> which is the best? Well, having recently had a disappointing... Oh, I know, uh, and I love uh, Zweiglers. <laughs> ...experience with Zweigl's. Yeah. And uh, I've still got one to get through, as a matter of fact, in the fridge. Yeah. But yeah. They're, they're they're lovely. And yeah. uh, uh, what first and ho- thing I do with a Zweigel is split it down the side and mm-hmm. take the casing off. Yeah. The natural casing peels right off. Mm-hmm. And, and then I can do uh, prepare it however I want. The basic mm-hmm. difference between the two companies is Zweigels are much plumper and the Nathan, uh, not the Nathan, the Hoffmans are, are thinner. But they both serve different types. And they both... Companies have different, unique 
taste palettes on their, their hot dogs. So yeah. Um, I'm going to finish with talking about some stuff we've actually had, and then there's some stuff we haven't had yet. Mm -hmm. We have had half moon cookies. <clears throat> Excuse me. Half moon cookies. Half moon cookies. Mm -hmm. mm. Varying sizes. I, I like the really big ones. Yeah. You know? And, well, they're very simple. It's just a, like, a chocolate cake-like mm -hmm. base topped with white and brown frosting. Uh -huh. Or you can get a vanilla base. Mm -hmm. You know, one's chocolate and the vanilla. Those came out of Utica. I believe that's where they started. I know you find them all over Utica and Rome. So you can have those with your uh, riggies. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> and make a great dessert. And they're so written. They're just wonderful. Another good one, while you're um, having your riggies, you may want on the side some Utica greens. Utica greens? Yeah. Oh, it depends. Depends on uh, where you go for the greens. You know, mm -hmm. if you were to go to Metaphysios yeah. in uh, Rome, New York, mm -hmm. and uh, that that's north of town on the boulevard for mm -hmm. anybody who wants to, you know, uh, visit. Yeah, that's got the best Utica greens, in my opinion. Well, you haven't had the ones from um, Vanya's, so I can't. Oh, Vanya. oh, okay, all right. <laughs> I will argue Vanya's are, uh, Vanya's not, are better. You are better. But oh, what, right. Utica greens are hot peppers, sautéed greens, usually um, arugula, uh, with chicken stock, uh, cheese, and breadcrumbs, and prosciutto. They're very good. Some of them will have white beans in them. Uh, it's, very, it's a very good, rich side dish mm -hmm. and yeah you have it with your riggies and your half moons but leave room for another central new york famous dish in fact so if you're stumped yeah. on that special day on thanksgiving and yeah. you don't know where to go and if it's open yeah yeah check it out yeah another famous dish from central new york so famous in fact it was actually invented in one of the uh industries that syracuse was famous for in the past those are salt potatoes. Mm. Now, people might be familiar with the salt potatoes from South America, which you put the potatoes in a uh, uh, covered in salt and bake them. Uh -huh. Not the same. You take small potatoes, usually like fingerling size. Uh, up here, you can get these prepackaged with with salt, and they make sure you do not peel them. They must, you know, if you have any of them broke or anything, don't use them. They got to be whole. And you're going to put them in a pot of heavily, heavily salted water. And like I said, we can buy basically bags, and it's like a few pounds of these potatoes with the portion of salt. Basically brining your potatoes. Yes, you're making a very heavy, salty brine. This, these came about because the Irish workers in the salt boilers mm -hmm. in Syracuse, well, they needed, you know, they'd cook their potatoes by throwing them in the bats. Mm -hmm. And that's where these came up from. The... Uh, Oh, we're having a little, uh, if you guys hear anything in the background, we have a new producer in the house. Um, it, his name is Lord per Percy. <laughs> and the other cats are just getting introduced to him. So, you have um, got four <laughs> cats in this household. So, I haven't had to shop for a cat in 20 years. Yeah. <laughs> they just come to my doorstep. But I'm just mentioning it now because I have a feeling we might end up with some loud noises. <laughs> okay. But anyway, go back to the salt potatoes. Uh they they come out very soft, and when you take them out of the water, a light dusting of salt will go around the skin. And I know some of you are thinking, oh, my God, you've ruined them. Uh -huh. Actually, they are not salty at all. Yeah. You bring them out, drain them, put them on a dish, and then slather them with melted butter. <laughs> Oh, they're delicious. They're amazing. Mm -hmm. That was the first thing I had when we went to Syracuse. I was like, I have to try salt potatoes. And that was the first thing I had. So I'm just going to check on something here, man. Okay. So I think we've covered all the central New York ones. Uh, let's see here. There, I, we have. There's some stuff we haven't tried. Well, there is... Oh, i got to talk about uh, spy... Oh, I'm going to say the name wrong. <laughs> People in Binghamton are going to hate me. <laughs> Speedle? Speedle? <laughs> Dang. When I, when I order them, I can say it. What? Speedies? Yes. Okay. It's right. uh, kind of like a kebab. 
Um, usually it's chicken or pork or lamb. I usually get the chicken or the pork. And it, the, the meat's cut in big cubes. And it's marinated in this lovely marinade. Uh, you can get the marinade all through New York here. And then you grill it. And they are, it's very good. They serve them on a bun. Uh, you can, most of the time, that's just it. That's all you need. But sometimes they'll throw other things on them. Um, and like Bigmanton, that's why I said, anybody in Bigmanton, I apologize for pronunciation. I can't believe I just could not say it right then. Uh, <laughs> I got those the first time I went to the New York State Fair. I was like, what are these? And the guy goes, it's just basically marinated chicken. I'm like, oh, that sounds good. No, it's not just basically marinated chicken. That's Cornell chicken. <laughs> no, this this is closer to a kebab. Right. So, yeah. Uh, I think that covers everything we we have actually eaten. Um, so clear your third pint and yes. order your kebab. Yes. So let's talk about stuff that we have not actually tried, but want to. And if I go back out to the Finger Lakes region again, I know there was a place when we went out to uh, Samson State Park that served this nearby. It's called Grape Pie. And that's exactly what it is. It's a pie made with grapes, but specifically Concord grapes. I just think that sounds amazing, and I want to try it. I think it's going to be like a blueberry pie. I've never had it, but it just sounds good. It really does. It does, it does sound delicious. Yeah. And then we got the, the different types of hot dogs. <laughs> We've already mentioned the White Hots. Oh, yeah. But we have... Now, this is going to cause confusion. If you're in Plattsburgh, people have Michigan hot dogs. But they have they, they did not originate in Michigan. <laughs> No, they hadn't. No. no. The Michigan hot dog. Now, explain what that is. Is that the one uh, without the ketchup on it? Yeah, it uses a meat sauce, like the chili sauce we mm -hmm. mentioned earlier, with onions and mustard on it. Maybe. So it's just a style hot dog. It's like, uh, but I don't, there's a kind of, there's a couple stories why it's called the Michigan hot dog. The person came from Michigan. Well, I know the Chicago hot dog just gets mustard on it, right? No, the Chicago hot dog... It, the quote I heard about Chicago hot dogs is it should look like it's been drugged through a garden backwards. Because <laughs> it's got the tomatoes on it mm -hmm. and a few other, vet yeah, you know, the Chicago, a true Chicago hot dog, you know, it's got vegetables on it. So you're getting your full meal. <laughs> you know? okay. okay. But the, the Michigan hot dogs in Plattsburgh, New York are meat sauce, onions, and mustard. And then you have the Texas hots, mm -hmm. which are yeah. like Michigan hot dogs, but use a different sauce. Uh, okay. okay. And then so it, get that straight. And then in Albany, you got a third choice, and they're called. Oh mini, dear, really? Yeah, and they're called mini dogs. Well, yeah, yeah, they will would be in in Albany. Yeah, they, they are basically half size hot dogs, and they're served on half size buns. So I think those are cute. Uh, <laughs> you name it, you'll get half of it in Albany. Well, the other weird one they have in Albany, and this sounds amazing too, is a thing called Melba sauce. You order your fried mozzarella sticks, you get Melba sauce, which is like uh -huh. a raspberry dipping sauce that you dip your mozzarella sticks. Oh. And I didn't have them on the list here because uh, this... I prefer lingonberry. That, I do too, but... That's Lind the money berry. Lingonberry is hard to get hold of in the United States, though. I know. You know. Try. Yeah. Every time I do find it, I, I do stock up. Mm -hmm. Uh but this post I made on Reddit was somebody was just asking for like you know street food, bar food. So that's basic what I listed. So uh -huh. there are some things missing here, and we've mentioned Rome, and Rome is also famous for a candy, I should in the area. In fact, there's a few candies I'm about to mention, and the one from Rome is the turkey joint, which I've never had because every time I go to buy a, a container, I look at the price tag and go. Ouch. And don't buy it. And especially now with too much sugar. It would, it would, it would, I, if somebody would buy me, you know, have one and give me one, I would like to try it. But but around the holiday time up here, a lot of people order, order turkey joints. And it, sound, it sounds weird, but it's just, uh, it's a type of candy. They look like long strings. Um, I think I have a more better description of them. But like well, I said. I know what you're talking yeah. about. And I've seen them in packaged in, uh, you know, like groups of five or something like that, yeah. or individually. And yeah, I've seen them sold in individually packaged in mm -hmm. plastic in a jar. Yes. 
yeah. with uh, the label Turkey Joints on yep. it. And, and I, I remember looking at that, what was that? I, I don't know when it was, but it was sometime, I think it was, in, I saw him the first time uh, in, in Syracuse. Right, right. And, and then, I, wonder, I looked at the jar and I'm like, what the heck? What's, what's this? Is this pickled? Yeah. <laughs> uh, what? Turkey joint? What the hell does that mean? But the, I asked somebody, here it is. like, oh yeah, they're, it's candy. It's and, candy. And it's, like, <laughs> it's, why is it called turkey joint? It's it's a sugar coating with uh, chocolate and nuts. So there you go. Oh, and it's I made in Rome. Mean. Yeah. So it's it's really, and they look like, they do kind of look like bones. <laughs> I yeah. hate to say it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, there, oh gosh, there's so many here. Else like we have a, a, the bone from a turkey leg that's yep. been eaten. All, you know, have the bones. I mean, have the meat stripped from the bone. Yeah. Now there is it another kind of look like that. Another candy that I had before coming to New York, uh -huh. um, and it was one of my favorite candies to have. And when I came out here and I saw Wegmans had it, I was beside myself. Mm -hmm. And that's the sponge candy. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh. You really. That is one it's, of your favorites. Yes, and I can't have it anymore. I'm so sorry. But sponge candy is, it's like a giant malt ball. <laughs> I guess this is the best description. It's uh, It's got this weird spongy mm. but crunchy center, uh, it, like a malt ball, but it's not malty tasting, and it's dipped in chocolate. And it's from Western New York, but I don't know why, I, I don't know why that, uh, our little spot in, in Wisconsin also had sponge candy like that. I don't know if right. it, it had, the people who developed it had the same mm -hmm. background or whatever. But it is a very, it's a very good candy. And it, but it's one of these candies that you know, one piece will last you a while. <laughs> it gets stuck in my teeth. Yeah. You know, and I just... it's not for everybody. I'll say that. <laughs> and another one that comes famous around, we have not done it, but this is more out towards the Albany area of around Christmas, is the peppermint pig. Uh huh. Oh, oh, oh yes. I, I think I've got a photograph of those. Yes, and they are exactly what I just said. They are peppermint pigs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That you uh, you buy and, and it comes with a silver hammer to help you break it apart. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> but that's a food we haven't tried. But I definitely want yeah. to try one of these days. So, well, you know, there's. All kinds of others too. Mm -hmm. You know, there's the prepackaged stuff here. Right. There's the you know the hell of a good line of uh, dips. And, oh and yeah. Such. Yeah yeah well yeah let's talk about the the name brands that came out. Well Saratoga uh Sar Macadam. There's Anirond Garlac. There's Anirondack, mm -hmm. um but for beverages. Right. There's the Saratoga chips. You know, the uh, Saratoga um, potato chips. Krogan bologna. Now, I should have tried this by now, but every time I go to buy it, I'm usually short in cash for groceries <laughs> that week, and I'm like, I look at it, but yeah, it's absolutely. it's made in Krogan, New York, and it's supposed to be the best bologna, and it's a ring bologna, that, and, and I love ring bologna, so I'm like, why I haven't had it yet, I been kicking myself and hell of good there's another name brand we talked about chobani yes chobani is from new mm -hmm. york and we did discuss knox jello yes we did but you go across to the western side and in leroy is where jello mm -hmm. was invented yes um so th those of us who grew up on the flavor jello j-e-l-l-o -L -L yeah right. uh we can thank uh the good people leroy Mm -hmm. uh, New York for developing that, yes. We will go into that one a little more in detail later. You know, one of my favorite sandwiches, the Reuben, mm -hmm. has the Thousand Island dressing on it. Which comes from the Thousand well, Island yeah. area, yes. It does, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what, McAdam cheese? McAdam, yeah. Absolutely. Yes, McAdam mm -hmm. cheese. There's also Anirondack cheese from around here. Uh, all this is, you know, all these are really good. And I guess if we're going to talk about New York food, we're going to have to start another fight. <laughs> but if you had a burned dairy on one side and a Stewart's on the other. Stewart's? Well, maybe. I, I don't know. It depends on how much money I have in my pocket, I think. Okay, I was going to say, who would you go for ice cream? But that's cruel. <laughs> 
That is cruel. Except if Stewart's has their crumbs along the Mohawk for sale, I, I will be going there. Right. Um, because the, both Burn Dairy and Stewart's have amazing ice cream. But I was just going to say, where would you go for lunch? Would you go get a Burn Dairy sub or would you go get the meatballs over at Stewart's? Mm. Well, well <laughs> that's a hard choice, isn't it? <laughs> uh, that can be. Yeah, for sure. These are, what we're discussing are two uh, local chains of convenience stores. Burn Dairy is run from Burn Dairy, which is one of the larger uh-huh. corporate dairies around here. And their their dairy products are very good. And this is coming from a Wisconsin girl. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> All right. And right. Stewart Shops, their dairy is very good, too. So, yeah. um, But if you go to the larger Burn Dairy convenience stores, they usually have an ice cream place and a sub and a pizza area. We did the... stop at a Burn Dairy on our way back home this last summer. Yeah. Uh, from, I, I think it was from one of the forts. I think yeah, was, yeah, uh, yeah. And uh, I, I forget which one it was off the top of my head. But anyway, it was a long drive. Mm-hmm. And we stopped at the Stewart Shop and... and we was, did get some dairy product. Was it Stewart's or Burn? Uh, I, I believe it was a Stewart's. Stewart's, yeah. yeah. Well, Stewart's, it, what's unique about Stewart's is <clears throat> those people, people who are lo- always looking out for pay phones, you will find them in a Stewart shop. <laughs> every every Stewart shop has a pay phone. A it's pay it's phone, unique. Yeah. Uh, and they, their ice cream's good, too. Like I said, crumbs along the Mohawk. Oh, you've got me. You know, <laughs> and I don't like gin, and I don't like graham crackers that much. But for some reason, the way they put you. them in that ice cream, it's amazing. When you put them together, yeah. yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. And uh, and they do have some amazing meatballs. If I go oh, to a Stewart yeah. shop, then their meatballs mm-hmm. and their mac and cheese are just to die for. And I, and so that's why I said you'd start well, fist fights. Who would you go to? <laughs> well, not, sometimes you know, you get a Clark's mm-hmm. along with it. Yeah, like with the burned area of the Stewart Sharp, and and the Clark's is the is the sandwich shop, and sometimes it. Oh, the the Clark's mm-hmm. in the in the grocery in in the stores. Yeah, the yeah, store, yeah, 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 yeah. And they're pretty good too. Yeah, yeah. And then you get other ones like, um, what are the other regional sub shops that you get around here? Oh, I can't think of any off the top of my head right isn't now. Isn't something like a, a Safeway? Or, no, I'm sorry, that's that's not yeah. it. But. Um, I know if I had it in front of me, I'd be able J-Rec. to tell you. Oh, J- well, J Rec, yeah. Yeah, J Rec is, uh, is a popular little minor franchise around here, yeah. But there was a. And oh, if we're going to talk about franchises, we got to talk about Bill Gray's. Oh, yeah. We got to talk about all those. I mean, um, let's see, it's, it's. Oof. My brain just went. I'm, I'm going to have to do a search, but it, uh, out toward the Rochester Wave, got some of these main, really cool diner franchises. And I'm, Bill Gray's was the first one we went to. We just were, mm-hmm. we were coming back from Rochester. We were hungry. We stopped. You had a milkshake. Uh-huh. And I think we both had a hamburgers. And we're like, we've got to keep coming back to this place. And then we tried Charlie. Oh, can't think of the name of it. It's their competition. It starts with Charlie. And Charlie Rigels, I think it is. Yeah. And it was like, okay, we had to come back to these guys. So we haven't tried all of them out in Rochester. It's like There's like a group of four, these local but they're really good. I think, no, it was, was it the Charlie's we stopped at? And we had their version of a garbage plate. And then they have up on the wall, the one we stopped at, they have a garbage plate challenge, which is a, a like, 10-pound garbage plate. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know? Absolutely. <laughs> like, no, that's not for us. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> nope. No. Yeah. No, right. Yeah, Saratoga chips, I mentioned they, they were... Potatoes that were started in Saratoga. Uh, so, oh yes, a friend of ours moved away briefly during coronavirus, and we had to say bye to her. And we went and got stuff for a picnic, and she bought a jar of this wonderful sauce. Uh, it's also made. It's from Syracuse, called the Spicy Hot Tomato Oil. Oh wow! Yeah. If you like dipping bread in oil. This is the sauce. It's made by Possibilities, and I remember we almost devoured that entire <laughs> the entire bottle when during our our picnic. Oh, I, I know. It's oh, it's amazing. It's 
I don't know how to describe it. I mean, it's right up there with the uh, dinosaur barbecues, mac and cheese, when you add the hot sauce to it. Okay. <laughs> you, just, you can't uh-huh. describe it. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, oh, yeah. No. By the way, people outside of New York, dinosaur barbecue started in New York. It started in Syracuse. So Absolutely. Yeah. Um, oh, and tomato pie. Now, I, I don't think we've had the Utica version of tomato pie no, because I don't think so either. there was a there is a Rhode Island version of tomato pie that we got sick of and um they're not the same though they look similar but they're not the same and I'm really sorry we've never tried it Utica people but the the Rhode Island version kind of put us off it and uh yeah too, yeah. too much too much garlic. Uh, the, yeah, it, and, and yeah. we have it. Mm-hmm. And we, every time we see the Utica version, we're like, we just look at it, and it looks so similar. It's like, uh, can't do it, can't. Yeah. So that's something we'll have to try eventually. Yeah. So, I think we've covered everything. Can you think of anything else? I mean, no, I can't really think of any, anything else that would yeah. be, you know, indelibly, you know, upstate New York, right? As far as a food source for you know this holiday season. Yeah. But that just gives you an idea. You, you know, it's more than just just pizza True. and bagels out here. It, it, it's a lot it's of not, stuff. Well, yeah, yeah, it is more than a lot just, of hot dogs. You know, <laughs> more, than, more than just that flat pizza, you got to roll up. Yeah. You know, and the, but that's the best. I mean, I love thin crust pizza, so I can't argue with that. I, I'll roll mine up fine. Oh, yeah. You yeah. know, but I do like the thicker crust one, which is what the tomato pie is. It's a very thick mm-hmm. crust one, but it's got very little cheese on it. and um, a lot of tomato sauce, uh, right. but I think that's it. I think we might be missing some. I'm sure. Oh, I got a, a, a condiments part sh- food, right? What's my favorite condiment I use around here? It's locally made. Bucks. I love bucks. That's my favorite. Also, also you know, it's a right, right, exactly. It's a, it's a seasoned salt, and I got to say, it's one of my favorites. I mean, I've tried the other stuff on, you know, the shelves, the big popular ones and all that. I bought a bag of bucks. Because <laughs> you either buy a little shaker or you can buy a bag of it. And I bought a bag of it. I love this stuff. It, it's a good all-purpose seasoning salt. And it's local. It's a local one. God, there's one I know we're missing that is, like, in this area. And I can't think of it right now. There's, like, a little factory or something in it. And I'm bugging me. <laughs> so... I know we're missing a lot more. We're we're bi- very biased when it comes to Central New York stuff. <laughs> so, and, and I hope we maybe have started some fights early for Thanksgiving. <laughs> like, is Burn Dairy better than Stewart's? Get, get, you know, get your licks in now. <laughs> you know, you, you, you can know, sit down and, and have some food. You know. Ways. <laughs> you know, you know. Do you prefer macaroni salad or or uh, baked beans on your garbage plate? You know. There's, we we could definitely start some fist fights with these arguments. You know, what's that breakfast uh, with toast and baked beans? Oh, that's the English full or the mm. Irish full. Oh, wait, you reminded me of another breakfast one. The okay. fritta. Oh. Not a frittata. The fritta. Fritta. Okay. I guess in the Midwest you'd call it a um, farmer's hash. Mm. But, being Central New York, Instead of have well, you could have bacon in it and ham, yeah. But it usually has like pepperoni in it and other things. But it's you know uh, the uh, home style of potatoes and eggs and peppers mm-hmm. and then the meats and then like I said, usually pepperoni in it and it's called a fritta. That is so filling. <laughs> <laughs> it, you know, it is good. It's not a frittata. A frittata is that uh, slowly cooked egg uh egg dish with, uh, with a lot of stuff in it now this is fried up on a, a grill and it's it's diner food it's <laughs> yeah that's another one that, i don't think that's uniquely upstate new york but it's definitely it's not indelibly upstate new york, one that we were introduced up you know, here yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah one so, of those things that i am I'm tra- i think it, there's a lot of food that develops simultaneously yeah yeah you know, and, and, in varying regions, mm-hmm. you know, sort of like the wheel. Yes. Yeah. 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 You know, and I, I've enjoyed most of the foods that mm-hmm. we've talked about on this episode. Yeah. And uh, I hope to, you know, try some of the 
the ones that we have you know mentioned and mm-hmm. and I haven't gotten to yet and uh, some of the uh, some of the hot dog varieties yeah I really haven't you know, explored well I like my Texas hots and there are different <laughs> varieties of buffalo wings too got to try those and oh yeah because there's more than one kind well the original is made with Frank's Red Hot, I uh-huh. believe. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, I think that's what the original's made with. But yeah, it, it's expanded out there. I mean, you get creative with the buffalo. And there wings are different now. kinds of reggies out there too. But you're right. I think uh, yeah, Teddy's and what was the other one from Oswego? Vanas. Vanas. Yeah. Vanas. Yeah. I, I think they run. They both run a neck and neck for mm-hmm. for me. I, I think they're really. And they were going to have people... But I think Vana's scre- is a bit spicier than, yeah. than Teddy's. And that, but there's going to be people screaming at us mm-hmm. up from Utica that, you know, no, you got to go Wait, you know, exactly. to this place and eat yeah. it, yeah. Exactly. Go ahead. Don't, don't hesitate to challenge us on right. that. But it, it lets you, us know that you're, you know, listening. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and we, have, we have fun. Yeah. But it's, mm-hmm. it's nice to be up here. I mean... I don't think we've ever told the, our listeners the story, but one of the reasons we decided to move to central New York was mm. we went to Wegmans. Now, that right there is enough. If you've ever <laughs> been into Wegmans, <laughs> that will make you enough to move, want to move here. Absolutely. Um, went into Wegmans, and we were, we'd been traveling all day, and we were checking this out because I had a few places uh, I could move to mm. with my job, and one of them was in, in central New York. And uh, we went to inside, and we were going to get stuff for a picnic, uh, so we're just going to stop at the grocery store and I remember looking around and my God, there's Johnsonville bratwurst. Oh. And then there were some local brands of, John, of bratwurst. And, like, and they actually know what bratwurst are, you know, cause oh, we'd wow. been living in a place where we're trying to describe bratwurst and like, that's Italian sauce. I'm trying to no, no, two different, two different things. Um, and then we went to the cheese section and I did a double take. There were cheese curds. Honest to goodness, cheese curds. <laughs> and those of you who don't know what cheese curds are, what I'm referring to, when they make cheese, yeah, there's a part where they have to cut, after it starts to solidify, they've mm-hmm. got to cut it, and that's the curd, to separate the curd from the whey. Right. Well, if you just grab up those pieces, cheese curds. Right. And you get them nice and warm, they squeak, it's wonderful. <laughs> And well, a good chill too. River rat cheese mm-hmm. from yes. the Thousand Island area. They they make some great ones. You know, um, well, it's not the only variety. It's one. not the only variety, but I, we always seem to get river rat ones. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, and and they'll you know they season them up and everything. But the grocery stores have their own. Yeah. And the local dairies brand up their own cheese curds right, as well. Right. You'll find them at the various shops. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I was seeing the bratwurst and the, the cheese curds and realizing, hey, this is not that much different from where we grew up, which was great because we just spent, you know, time in a place that, you know, we were missing a lot of stuff. We were homesick. Exactly. And yeah. uh, what also changed, you know, then we went down to Onondaga Park to have our picnic mm-hmm. and people were very friendly and it was really <laughs> nice. And I know people, I know that people crap on Syracuse a lot and I know we have too, but Really, I think we entered in just yeah. on, on the cusp of what was happening. Yeah, I mean there are bad sections of, and, of Syracuse. But now it's but mm. there are still places to go around Syracuse, like in Liverpool and around on. It's no Park longer down and, to neighborhoods. It's all yeah. patchy. But you know, there's good areas. Clark's came out. You know, mm-hmm. just like every place else. But yeah, I hope uh, yeah. kind of went on a ramble there at the yeah. end. <laughs> but that's. Well, I know we just took the, 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 well, the tip of the iceberg. A, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, the, the food has a lot to do with uh, what's happening regionally. Yes, know? yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, like, you know, it's funny because we got the Michigans up in Plattsburgh. <laughs> it just cracks me up. I don't know. Yeah, like some and then, people think you can't talk about fry bread unless you're, you know, in the Southwest or something. You know? Which is funny because where I grew up, the fry bread was made by the Ojibwe. <laughs> you know, which is a northern tribe. Which is a northern <laughs> Midwest tribe, yes. Exactly. So, yeah. Uh, you know, a lot of food snobs out there. And yeah. We just don't give a F. Yeah. It, it definitely, if you come out to New York uh, State, definitely try a lot of these. I know we've missed some because uh, huh. every place we yeah. go, we, we find another specialty. Right. And maybe it's not even considered a specialty, it's just something the locals like. 
and some yeah. of the things that I like from mm-hmm. some of the you know, the quick, you know, kind of yeah. you know sinful pleasure kind of foods, you know, that like the tombstone pizzas from yeah. the Midwest have made their way out here. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know, uh, tombstone sauce just isn't as tangy as it used to be. <laughs> I do hear that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Something changed hands there. Yeah. But then the Lion and Kogels is made it out yeah. here as well. But it's not every variety, you know. Yeah. And But then you're drinking you know, you're drinking that one. Oh yeah. well yeah, you know, Yuvling Lager is yeah. very Well and then there's you know the like, taste is very close to Lion and Kogels. We'll have to do a part two where we discuss our favorite wines mm. from the local wineries and our favorite beers. Right, <laughs> so exactly. you could <laughs> Right. On that wins mean we'll have to do some study. right exactly (laughs) anyway so that was a big just recently we tasted uh, Tennessee Moonshine didn't we yes Mm -hmm. yes Um, and if I have if my um, stuffy again I will have it (laughs) definitely congested I will definitely try that again Uh, yeah we'll have to do a whole segment just on the alcohol uh, yeah, all that's up here because we've got a lot of good mm-hmm. breweries. Uh, definitely, there is a Great wine. Wines. There is a wine that's mm-hmm. made locally that I think is one of the best fruit wines I have ever had. And I just found about a, this last fall, and I'm like, can't wait to buy more. <laughs> so uh, I don't want to mention its name because I don't want to get it wrong. Yeah, but it's a local winery. It makes a dynamite riesling. Yes. Yes. Yeah, it's really... Let's save this for part. Let's save that sure, for part sure. two when we have when we totally screw up a episode and have to record Absolutely. something on top of our heads. So this is something different, but we we had to give you something, <laughs> okay. and this is going to be on the fly. So we're sorry about any editing. And, and since it's you know the a season for when the feasting starts yeah. and whatnot, let's hope it whets your appetite. That, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, thank you. Well, on that, uh, thank you for listening to our gastronomical <laughs> podcast. <laughs> Bye. Thank you for listening to Unearthly Upstate. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Patreon, and on our webpage. We are also on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Sprecher, Stitcher, Podbean, Google Podcasts, and CastBox. Please like, share, and view on your favorite platform. Unearthly Upstate is an Animator Liar production. The show is produced by Mari and Matt Manette, with purring provided by Honey and Lloyd. Research and writing by Mari Manette. Music is by Kevin McCloud, licensed under Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 license. Unless otherwise stated in the episode, the places mentioned in the broadcast are not paid or contact us for any type of promotion. Please check out our webpage for credit and sources for the episode. Thank you.